morning, welcome to Thought for the Day for Thursday. Hope you're all well. You know, the, the Sermon on the Mount uh, starts with Matthew's account of how the calling of Israel was expressed through the law and the prophets and he's carried forward into the ministry of the church. And Jesus then likens the church to salt and light to believers as salt and light. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. The full meaning of the passage um, in between verses 11 to 20 is perhaps easily lost. If you read it as one discourse, it's sort of the gist of it is as followers of Jesus, expect to be persecuted as the prophets were because you stand in continuity with them and this means you are like salt which must do its work faithfully and also like a, a cluster of lights which are highly highly visible and Jesus went on to make that responsibility quite clear he said that if his disciples are not being salty they're not much use to anyone and salt had three main purposes it was used to slow down decay and preserve fresh meat or fish um, or it could be used to enhance the flavor of the food and lastly it could reduce infection in a wound and these three roles of preservative and flavour enhancer and antiseptic can be interpreted as a social agenda that involves preventing the bad and promoting the good and bringing healing. And for salt to work, it has to be applied directly onto the object that it's acting upon. A salty church means rolling up the sleeves in active involvement with the surrounding culture, the, the local community or the wider community. And this has echoes of Jeremiah in verse 29, chapter 29, verses 4 to 7, where the Jewish exiles were instructed to seek the welfare of the pagan city. And we shouldn't retreat from social engagement and social comment. That's akin to the salt just being kept and remaining in the salt cellar. But we're called to be active participants, even leaders in the secular world, in the secular institutions of society, seeking to have some influence or responsibility and that implies building relationships and listening and responding sometimes being peacemakers sometimes being healers challengers sometimes being comforters being a salty church is a seven day a week ministry for each one of us Salty disciples seek to affirm whatever reflects the goodness of creation or the values that the Bible teaches us that, that Jesus was a, a model of. And we should be trying to step into the gap of damaged relationships to bring reconciliation and healing that I've mentioned. This week we saw the issues in relation to the overt racism directed at those three young black footballers. We can't not say anything. We can't not challenge where it needs to be challenged. We have to step into that gap. 
And a salty church is a messy one too. I know we have messy church, but a salty one is a wider messiness. And because it's a messiness, we'll inevitably make mistakes. But what greater thing is there to live for? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. It's Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. So I just say, will we be a church that keeps its salt in a salt cellar? In the kitchen cupboard maybe, only occasionally brought out. Will we use the dimmer switch on our light or will we turn our light off to save energy? Or will we be the salt and light? We can make the choice. And if we truly seek the kingdom, we will make the right choice. Amen. Take care, look after yourselves and um, I'll speak to you on Monday. God bless. Bye bye.